Good morning, so here we are at the Falkirk Whale. It's the world's only rotating boat lift. So hopefully we're going to catch something in operation, but you can come here, you can hire boats, go on tour boats. But the design was inspired by the seven bones of a ribcage of a whale. And it takes just five minutes to rotate 180 degrees. And you might think it's going to take a lot of energy, but it only takes the power of what it would take to boil eight kettles. So it's a pretty phenomenal feat of engineering and it can take the weight of 100 elephants. So that's quite a few boats and quite a few people. Uh, you can have your ride up on the wheel. Plenty to do here. Play zone for the kids. It looks like archery up there. So it's a full centre. There's uh, a lot of things you can do here. The parking's £3.50 and we're going to find out for you how much if you wanted to take a little ride on the wheel, just through the wheel, you can see where the motorhomes can stay overnight for the cost of £15 a night. That's really good, isn't it? Mm. And up there through the clouds, you can just about see the sun. Just. You come up the canal in your canal boat and you come through the lock here into the main holding area. But the rest of the canal is all the way up there. So you need a way to get up there. And the only way is the wheel. So it is like a, an elevator, you drive on <laughs> in your boat, what do you do in a boat? Sail? Um, well, the don't know. I don't know, I don't know what you do in a canal boat. Yeah, um, sail on, move, move, drive on. That'll drive be. on, <laughs> yeah. You drive on and it just rotates you up and whoever's up on the top waiting to come down, they come down. Then you do your shuffle about and uh, through the locks. A great little system. Okay, just been in. Uh -huh. If you want to go on the wheel, it's £17.50 per adult. Okay, and what does it do? It just takes you up and down again? It takes it? you up and I think you can get out and have a little look and then brings you back down again. Uh -huh. So that's that's what that costs. Nice gift shop. Nice. Got some nice things in there. Can you say dogs on the wheel? I didn't see anything about dogs being allowed on there. So I don't know. Yeah, it looks nice though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. And the rain's easy. A little yeah. bit, yeah, a little bit. So 35 quid for the pair of us. Yeah. I, I guess it's... Well. It's nice, but I think you can see a lot from not even yeah. getting on it. And there's a lot here as well. It looks like a nice coffee shop. Um, a nice shop. So it's, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, and also disabled facilities as well. And yes. it's quite a flat ground, isn't it? So yeah. it is wheelchair user, stroller friendly. Definitely. And it, you can go all the way round. So... Uh, and on the upside in the car park, what we spotted is water. So There's we're going to have a cup of coffee <laughs> and, and top uh, up the water. Yeah, I think so. Right, and let's start to come down again. Holiday boat hire. Right, uh, up this path up here, I think. There it is. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, a little wow. photograph of well, it. There we go, look. So there's no getting away there, is there? Oh, no, no. It's got us. That's fine. Thanks That's out. us. Contactless, so let's do it contactless there. She come up there. There we go, contactless. Simple as that, that's wow. great. Welcome to Kuris. You probably thought I was going to get that wrong. But because we come from the land, place names that look nothing like it is written down, uh, yeah, we were on that. Anyway, this is a beautiful little village in the Kingdom of Fife.
just climbed up quite so, some quite steep steps, reminded <laughs> us of Brixham. Let me get my words back. Um, it's gorgeous up here. Now, with Caris, you can see the red tiled roofs. Now this was because they used to export coal to the Netherlands and Belgium and for ballast for the ships on the way they would use red tiles so that's why the roofs were done in red tiles just got told that the origins of this go back to the 6th century yeah so the Dutch are on the way back yeah it was a religious center uh it's it's absolutely fabulous it was um put brought back to life by the National Trust, the Scottish National Trust. And you can see all the red roofs down there. That's the palace gardens, you can see. And the palace was built by a relation of the king at the time, Robert the Bruce. We're on our way up now to the, the ruins of the Abbey. Yes. The lady down there said to go up the steps, which yeah, they were a feral climb. If you've been to Brixham, <laughs> We looked at the steps and went, ah, oh, yes, reminds us of Brixham, yeah. But it got great view over to um, the refineries over at Grangemouth. And she said that the pub down there and a restaurant as well. Yep. And everything here, I think apart from inside the National Trust, but everything else here is dog friendly. Yes. So good on that one as well. Yeah, but the ladies in the National Trust place were so friendly. They were lovely. They came out and chatted to us into the gardens. Yeah. Um, and it was lovely to chat to them. And um, we even got treats on the gate that sniff, sniffer, Pippa <laughs> sniffed out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she had two lots. And so she's had her photo taken as well for the Scotland's National Trust album of visitors to the palace. Oh. these steps, see what the next set's like. Probably not as um, extreme as the last ones. Well, so if you're a fan of Outlander, the historical fantasy drama, Huris was used for filming. Uh, in season one, they used this a lot and all the houses were painted from white to gray. Now, apparently they've reverted back to white, but you can see there, I think, remnants of grey paint. But yes, they've used this several times for filming Outlander. In fact, they've filmed quite a few different things in this place because it is owned by the Scottish National Trust. There you go. A bit like, um, what's that one in Wales? Port, Port Merion? Oh, Port Merion, yeah, yeah, where they did... Um, Prisoner. The man in the bomb. Yeah, and the that's owned bomb. as well, isn't it? Yeah. Cross, the one that featured in the Outlander series and the base is original so we'll go back to the 15th century but the top bit isn't that was rebuilt all of these houses so we've got some of them have got blue plaques there's one on the wall there and that plaque on the wall indicates it was rebuilt by the National Trust Scotland when they bought the town and put it all back together and you can see up there that house is 1661 and we found out that the palace, although it's called a palace, it isn't. It was to do with a misinterpretation of the title deeds. So it was just called a palace in error, and that's kind of just stuck with it. And that's why there's a palace in this, what was a city, now beautiful little village. Well, 
That's the back Fraser's Ridge. Oh, wow. This is one of the cottages from the... Oh, of course, yeah, they mentioned... Yeah, the Wee Causeway House was used by... I can't remember the name of the uh, characters, but really that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. We have been to so many fantastic places over the last few years and Kuris is up there with them. It's incredible. Um, we'd never heard of it. We just found it on a map and then one of you, can't remember who, but thank you, <laughs> suggested it. And uh, we looked it up, absolutely blown away by this place. It's fantastic. And obviously free to wander around. It's free to wander around. It's free to park up as well. Yeah. And there's also, we haven't got there yet, there's an abbey. Yes, we're going to walk there now. But it's, 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 this is just something really quite special, isn't it? It is. It's a, you know, we, we did watch Outlander, so we have seen this place before. Um, it had a different name in the TV show. But just these gorgeous little houses. Oh, now, you know we like a door knocker. Oh. Check that one. Look at the knocker on that one. That is fabulous. It's a snail. <laughs> I love it. So the monks that used to be here were in undyed robes. So they were white. So they were known as the white monks. So that's what they used to do around here. And they became involved in the mining. The monks owned the mining rights around here. In 1575, they leased the mining rights to George Bruce, the relative of Robert the Bruce. And there was a mine then that stretched under the Firth of Forth. So they were actually mining under the water. So what we've got here is a little handle and this is referred to as the locket well. And this actually is it's got the ability in its day, I mean there's a picture of a lady on the wall there in the 1800s, to turn the stream, the flow of the stream, on and off to the lower ground. Amazing, look at it. And that's why it's called the locket well. Now that makes sense because of the cleaver on there. Yeah. And so maybe, maybe that's his initials. It's all, there's a sign. The ah, there. the butcher's house. Maybe that's because I noticed on some of the gravestones there were um, sort of representations of a trade. Yeah. So I see the pair of scissors. That ah. clearly represents scissors. So it must have been the trades in the town that were buried up there. So maybe scissors would be a tailor, perhaps. Yeah. That's a study, wasn't it? Watch your ankle on these cobbles. Oh, look at that. Look how tiny it is. Even I could probably reach the upstairs. Yeah. Well, yeah. not quite, but the upstairs windowsill I can nearly touch. I guessed it was a Riley, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Yeah. The 1939 Flocking Standard 8. Wow. 8 horsepower. Oh wow, it even featured in the film Yanks with Richard Gere. Yeah, amazing isn't it? £3,000. Yeah. ULES compliance. What a fabulous little car. Bodywork by Fisher and Ludlow in Coventry. I mean body wise it's 3 forward gears, 8 horsepower engine, new tyres. 
was there. What a little beauty. 1939 standard flying eight. So that was built before this, well, when the Second World War began. Fabulous, isn't it? Yeah. It is, it's, needs a lot of work in doing to it. I love its indicators. Do you see its indicator? Yeah, the traficators, yeah, they, yeah. Pop, they pop out when you indicate. Look at the, the beautiful blue leather seats. I mean, they're all cracked and everything. Yeah, Bit of a renovation job, that one. Redders, you're not having it. Come on, come away. <laughs> Still trying to work out a way to trail the uh, stag behind us. Big trailer. Yeah. Well, we have absolutely loved Kouris. It's oh, amazing, wonderful. It? If you are in the area of doing the Kelpies and the Falkirk Wheel, you must come. It took, what, 15, 20 minutes to get here? Not far at all, and you can, you can wander for hours. Yeah, we, we've just had the most amazing time. Uh, so much to see, and it's so beautiful. And it, really just does remind me of that place in Wales, Port Myrian. Yeah. Um, even reminds me of some little Greek villages we went to, doesn't it? Oh, it's, it's amazing and you've got, as we show you, the, the old abbey, the palace, which isn't a palace, but there's reasons behind that which we've already mentioned. Yeah. The scenery, the backdrops to the films. So much history. And but lovely little shops as well. I just went and bought a couple of bits and bobs, knickknacks. 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 And the big plus side with this, it's a, to me it's a huge Oh, it's a great tourist attraction and it's free. Yeah. You can't ask for more. You know, with the National Trust, yes, you do pay to get in, you get membership. But in terms of what the village offers, yeah. it's free. You, you must come. It really is lovely here. Kouris is oh, fantastic. Yeah. It's popular as well. I mean, yeah. there's, there's bus stops, there's coaches coming in and out. Um, I, I'm sure the locals loved the day when the National Trust came in and said, Let's put this place back on the map and they've done a grand job. Yeah, we uh, we thoroughly enjoyed the Kelpies and the Falkirk Wheel, but uh, I've loved this. This is perfect. So if you can, come and visit. Yes. Stunning, absolutely stunning. Right, back to the van and uh, work out what we're doing. If we're parking here or I parking we'll elsewhere. Will we? Will we? Yep. All right, okay. So we had a fantastic night here last night in uh, Chris. Um, I'll show you where we parked up. I think you saw where we parked up. You're probably not going to hear me because it is so windy. I don't know if they're going to hear us because it's so windy. No, I hope not. But out there you can just see the remnants of the old coal mine, which collapsed in 1600s. Oh, <laughs> I'm all I don't know if you could hear what Redders was saying just there, but he was talking about he's he could oh oh <laughs> don't leave you yeah I had that up just airing the van out because it smelled a bit of wet dog yesterday um. The mines, just yes. in case they didn't hear you a second ago. Yeah, the mines out there in the mud are the remnants of the mines, which was taken over by, what was his name again? George <coughs> Bruce. They took the lease off the monks and they started mining under the fourth. Yeah. And I think it was about 25 years later it collapsed. There were fatalities and they've just left it as it is. There's not much left because it's a good few hundred years since but uh, that's what's there. At the moment there's a huge redevelopment plan going on here as well along with the Scottish National Trust. Looks like a new railway along the front and the town really is awesome. Yeah, in fact 
going on to the Scottish National Trust, we're thinking of joining because I was reading this morning, if you join, we used to be members of the National Trust in England and Wales, um, but we let that lapse this Christmas. Um, but if you join the Scottish one, you automatically can visit the English and Welsh properties or English properties. If you join the English and Welsh one, you can automatically join the Scottish one. So if you're going to join one of them, join the Scottish one. Top tip, money saving. Hello, happy Sunday. So uh, I hope you enjoyed our little visit round Kouris and for the Falkirk Wheel. We've got plenty more great stuff coming. This trip is just getting better and better. We're sitting very glamorously at the moment. Where are we, Redders? Uh, we're in a lay-by. Not the prettiest of lay-bys, but the sun's out. And again, what we've done, we're in the middle of nowhere because we do need power. The solar's not quite enough to recharge our battery banks, so we've got the generator running again, which is under review so that will be coming up shortly so that's what the noise is in the background so I think if you ever think to yourself is a generator um, socially acceptable that's the noise we can hear it inside the van and they are noisy even on tick over it's noisy they ain't silent so we will always find the middle of nowhere to do this beside a busy road that drowns out the noise <laughs> well it's beside a busy road that drowns out the noise in all fairness, the generator is working really well. It's recharging three power banks, running the, um, the Starlink on the roof. So we're very pleased with it. So that will be a review up soon. That'll be on a separate vlog, usually on a Friday. It's a happy birthday to Kevin, who is 66 on the 16th of April. Now, I won't forget that one because that's my birthday day too. 16th of April so we do share something there. Happy birthday Kevin, <laughs> hope you had a great day. Andrea and Ruby the Cavachon who let us know. So have a great day. And thanks for watching and subscribing and all your comments we do get through them and we do appreciate your recommendations where to go. Thanks for watching.